also of WrestlingObserver.com. So an update from the end of the show yesterday when we went off the air. Brock Lesnar not under WWE contract. Dave Meltzer confirmed he is no longer under a WWE deal, although his contract expired actually at WrestleMania. So the story that came out yesterday about how his deal had expired, what actually happened was his merchandising deal had expired. His, he has not been under WWE contract as a wrestler for months and months now. So this has happened before. Site reported that the sides have been working on a new deal. Negotiations have been an impasse. They have paused negotiations. This has happened many times before. Lesnar's merchandise deal did just expire. His merchandise has been removed from WWE's website. His profile is still under the active Raw roster page. So I don't think that Brock is going to AEW. You guys, if you knew how much Brock Lesnar was making to do nothing in WWE, I mean, it would cost so much money to get him at AEW. I mean, maybe he could go and fight for UFC, but, I mean, even that, does he want to fight again? He's, he's had opportunities in years past to fight. He even started a training camp once, and halfway through the training camp decided, I don't want to fight. And that was years ago. So, it's not like he's hurting for money. He lives on a farm. He doesn't even have a TV. I mean, he doesn't need any more money for the rest of his lifetime. If he wants to make money, he can chill out. He can wait until WWE needs him. They'll offer him a preposterous amount of money for no dates, and he'll go in there and do that. But for now, I would not expect to see him on Dynamite anytime soon. Would not expect him to see. Would not expect to see him at all out. Anything is possible. I mean, if they want to pay that kind of money, they could. But I don't think they're going to, and I don't think they want to, quite frankly. So Brock will be out until fans come back, until they find a need for him, and when they do, WWE will pay him. And he'll come back. Or he'll never wrestle again. It's always a great fantasy scenario because Brock Lesnar is such a star that you could put him and drop him, you know, AEW, New Japan, UFC, uh, Bellator. It's great to think about him in other places, but you look at both sides of that equation and where is the juice worth the squeeze if you are not selling pay-per-views, if you have no way to recoup the money you're going to pay to Brock Lesnar you know, is his one or two time appearance going to be enough to put you in another level when it comes to business, put you in, in the stratosphere when it comes to business that it's worth it? You know, I doubt it. And the same goes for him. As you mentioned, there's no reason Brock Lesnar does not have to lift a finger for the rest of his life. He or his wife, they have a uh, a large, uh, I would assume, a large amount of money saved up. They certainly seem to, and now he's just working on legacy money. So why, you know, what's it worth to him if he's not coming back with the what is perceived as the A plus number one place? You know, it's the same thing with the Rock. When people start putting the Rock in different places, it's again, it's like you know, it's always it's always possible it could happen, but how does it really truly benefit both sides? This person here says, of course, I must read this. You are absolutely correct, Brian. Last okay. night, as well as the next four weeks of Raw, is going to be all about Randy Orton. Keith Lee won the pay-per-view. Now he is taking a back seat. I do not like his momentum being slowed down. Well, listen. They, it wasn't a disaster last night. They're not burying Keith Lee. But no, Keith Lee is not going to be a big-time WWE main eventer at this point. Maybe he will be down the road, but... He went 50-50 for seven minutes with Dolph Ziggler. They did protect him in the main event in the sense that they didn't pin him. They pinned Seth Rollins. And quite frankly, based on Rey Mysterio tearing a tricep, here's what happened yesterday. It was supposed to be Seth versus Rey Mysterio in this mini tournament that they had. Rey Mysterio suffered a torn triceps in the pay-per-view. It's not major. He'll, he'll be out a month or two. But he couldn't wrestle last night. So in his place, they put Dominic. So my guess is that originally what was going to happen is that Ray was going to beat Seth. The main event was going to be Ray Mysterio versus Keith Lee versus Randy Orton. And Randy Orton was going to pin Ray Mysterio. I'm 99% sure that's what was going to happen. It didn't work out that way. They didn't want Dominic to beat Seth. Seth beat Dominic. And Seth gets pinned in the main event. But yes, Randy Orton laid out Keith Lee with the RKO. He put him out of action, and he pinned Seth Rollins. This coming on the heels of Keith Lee selling for seven minutes. 
not seven minutes, three and a half minutes of a seven-minute match for Dolph Ziggler. I mean, they've slotted him. He is an upper mid-carder. He's not a mid-carder. He's not a jobber. But he's he's definitely not going to be the replacement for Brock Lesnar. And that's fine. That's fine. But that's it. I don't know what else to tell you. People want more, but you're not going to get it. I'm sorry. I think... I think the biggest problem with last night, and I think you're again the last two nights. I think you're you've been a little hard on the Keith Lee situation, although I completely understand where you're coming from. No. And if this doesn't pan out, maybe not. But they have not done a good transition to Randy Orton's slimy heel guy <laughs> because him out of nowhere with the Photoshop, and then not really doing a good job to point out that Orton is so slimy that Keith Lee was the one who hit Rollins with the move that laid him out for so long that it gave Orton a chance to sneak Lee from behind and lay him out and still go over and get the pin. You know, that wasn't established very well. Are we going to see Randy Orton be a a more old, I mean, I know old, old school wrestling and Randy Orton kind of go together, you know, quite well, but like, are we going to see a little bit of a pull away from the psychopathic viper that's been kicking old people in the head and now we're going to get more of the, you know, the humorous slimy type of heel? I mean, that's kind of up in the air too, where, you know, Keith Lee, there was an issue there, but it's like with Randy Orton, it's like, okay, you know, the, the juxtaposition between him kicking Ric Flair and kicking Christian and kicking Edge, and then all of a sudden he's got time to do Photoshop, I thought was, it, it was interesting, but I think you're still being a little hard on this, but if they like, if they wanted to mash him over, like they have done with Drew McIntyre, they would be mashing him over, and they're not doing that. I don't know how I'm being harsh. I'm telling you, he is an upper mid-carder now. I said a little hard on it. I didn't say harsh. Either way, I mean, this is what they told you the last two days. He is an upper mid-carder. He's not going to be the next Brock Lesnar. He's not in the title picture right now. That's It's all about Randy Orton, and it will be all about Randy Orton for the next three weeks. I'm not being hard at all. That is a factual statement. That's what's going to happen. He also, you were, because like yesterday, people can go back and listen to it. I think you were a little hard on the fact that he wiped out Randy Orton in five minutes. And, you know, you even brought up the chin lock and all that stuff. I think what happened on Sunday, sold I thought for was most a, of the match. I, I thought you were, again, I think the percent, I, I don't think Keith Lee lost anything in that match. And again, wiping out Randy Orton in five minutes, I thought was good. He didn't lose anything. My point is, they did nothing over the last couple of days to showcase Keith Lee except give him a six-minute get-your-arm-raised-over-Randy-Orton. He didn't show anything that he can do. He got, like, four spots in the Randy Orton match. He went 50-50 with Dolph Ziggler. If you want to get this guy over, it's it's not hard. I mean, I'm going to make people really angry, but who cares? If you look at what AEW did with Lance Archer, okay... Lance Archer came in and he brutalized everybody. He never sold for anybody. He destroyed everybody in every single one of those matches. He gets a title shot, he loses, and then he goes right back to killing everyone and squashing them and massacring them, and he hasn't sold a thing since, and they push that he's 6-1 and one or whatever. Okay, that's Lance Archer. You got Keith Lee in WWE, and they haven't done anything resembling that yet. He's in there going 50-50 with Dolph Ziggler, dude. Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> Hello? It's not even Randy Orton. It, he, it took him longer to beat Dolph than it took for him to beat Randy. Dolph Ziggler. This is not rocket science. But they have a way of doing certain things, and they're going to do with Keith Lee what they do to everybody else. If I'm wrong, you can all come back to me in a month or two and say, look, Brian, you're wrong. But after Raw last night, I have no evidence that I'm wrong about this. It's, it's the same thing that they do with everybody. It's the same thing they did with Riddle. And where is Riddle a month after he debuted? Well, he's a guy who barely beat Baron Corbett and then got destroyed afterwards. And this feud is going to continue and probably lead to a kiss-my-foot match. Is that what you all wanted out of Matt Riddle? That's not what I wanted. Well, you know, it doesn't matter if you're wrong or you're right. I'm not trying to win that battle. Uh, the only thing I know is if Keith Lee wants to be pushed at a different level, he's got to stop being such a good guy. They don't know how to do anything with those guys. That's the other thing that's going to hamper him.